here comes the fun part, which is the entire political debate. So um, I'll, I don't know if, Rishad, if you know about like any politics behind renewable energy. So I believe um, there is this entire debate between the global north and the global south about um, who should take yeah. the responsibility for taking this forward. And yeah. um, I think it's very interesting. It's a very interesting discussion because um, both of them have have uh, statements that that they are right about in their own sense. But um, I think we need to come together and uh, maybe a global stance which will help everyone with everyone participating in that help will be will be the way forward. But um, what do you think? What do you think? Um, yeah. I think it's quite unfortunate, actually, like the situation we have today, because everyone is vying for like economic dominance and power. Um, no one's really right. willing to make the compromise themselves to save um, their save humankind and planet Earth. Uh, so it's really become a political issue. And like you brought up the global north and the global south. So the global north is basically the set of countries that we consider developed countries. For example, the United States, United Kingdom, Canada, Germany, France, etc. Now, if you look historically, these countries have made their built up their economies essentially by using non-renewable sources of energy, exploiting them entirely. Um, and their argument is that one. At the time, their industries and econo econo economies were developed. Renewable sources of energy simply did not exist. And two, right. they did not know the harmful effects of using non-renewable sources of energy. So that seems a very plausible argument. And you would think that the Global South would have no response to that. But they actually really do. The Global South's argument is that they believe it's economically unfair for countries of the global north have been able to develop their economies by using non-renewable sources while they are forced to develop their economies using renewable sources which are much much more expensive to set up and maintain and examples of countries that are part of the global south of course india um but then we have bangladesh as well brazil china the philippines um these right. are all countries that are have a tremendous potential to expand economically. But what we really have is the global north passing the bill down to them and handing them the responsibility of saving planet Earth. And if you look yeah, at it, the global north is playing quite the hypocritical policy because course, yeah. they themselves are still using majority of non-renewable sources to provide their energy. For example, the US right. just recently invested a lot again in shale oil. Um, which is extremely harmful to the environment. So it, I don't yeah. think this issue will be solved really any soon, but it really does. And I just hope that uh, countries can come to a consensus and I hope it doesn't get yeah. too bad to a point where we are forced to react in a certain way. Yeah, of course. And I think another important point to note here is that um, if the global south countries as they're developing were forced to use renewable sources uh, which are more expensive uh, we also need to keep in mind that these countries are still developing they are still investing loads of loads of their resources in the process of development if uh, they were to invest more in this development process and other developed countries of the world which are already far ahead they i think then they will be going way more ahead and the imbalance will never be covered up. Exactly. Um, so that, that's another issue. And that's one of the arguments that the Global South poses. But yeah. uh, again, sticking to politics and something that really isn't related to the Global North at all Global South is the Middle East. Uh, the Middle East is known for its large oil reserves. Um, and they really play a key role in preventing the transition to renewable sources of energy because they feel threatened that their economies will not be able to sustain the minute um, the world stops buying oil from them. And yeah, because of, of that, the entire economy dies in oil. Exactly, right? So because of that, they have they employ lobbyists um, yeah. who literally, literally lobby politicians to prevent them from switching to renewable sources of energy and incentivize them. 
to continue buying oil from them and honestly i don't think this is a long term strategy and i think the uae as a country even qatar has started to realize that slowly and slowly all of them are they are becoming slowly more international they're encouraging more industries to blossom within their countries but it's still unfortunate that selfish motives still remains a major reason for why we aren't able to solve this crisis at hand yes yeah very true